Facebook.
Потому что здесь преданные смотрят через интернет, и есть преданные, которые не говорят. There may be a few people here that don't speak Russian. So I'll just read one sentence, and then you can go back and say. Yeah. Are you on mute? It's okay. Oh yeah. This chapter is entitled "Parashuram: The Lord's Warrior Incarnation." This is the ninth canto, chapter 15. This chapter describes the history of Gadhi in the dynasty of Ayla. So there's a lot of names. You have to memorize all of them or we won't give you prasad. <laughs> so pay attention. From the womb of Urvashi came six sons. You have to memorize these names. Ayu, Shrutayu, Satyayu, Raya, Jaya, and Vijaya. Got it? No problem. The son of Shrutayu was Vasuman. The son of Satyayu was Shrutanjaya. The son of Raya was Eka. The son of Jaya was Amita. And the son of Vijaya was Bhima. Bhima's son was named Kanchana. The son of Kanchana was Hotraka. And the son of Hotraka was Jana, who was celebrated for having drunk all the water of the Ganges in one sip. As far as the Russian language is concerned and me, I think I'm hopeless. Unless I take birth in Russia, I don't think I could pronounce it. In this language. 
Of course, you're not supposed to say you can never do anything. It just seems like I can never do it. No, the descendants of Janu, one after another, were Puru, Balaka, Ajaka, and Kusha. The sons of Kusha were Kushambu, Tanaya, Vasu, and Kushanabha. You memorizing all of this? No? Anyway, it's purifying to hear the names. Hearing the names is purifying. From Kushambu came Gadhi, who had a daughter named Satyavati. Sadhyavati married Richiki Muni. After the Muni contributed a substantial dowry and, yes. and from the womb of Satyavati by Richika Muni, Jamadagni was born. The son of Jamadagni was Rama or Parashurama. So the whole, the whole point of describing this dynasty is to come to this point of Parashuram. Hmm. When a king named Kartavir Arjuna stole Jamadagni's desire cow, Parashurama, who was ascertained by learned experts, to be a Saktavesha avatar of the Supreme Personality of God, he killed Kartavir Arjuna. Later he annihilated the Kshatriya dynasty 21 times. <coughs> After Parashurama killed Kartavir Arjuna, Jamadagni told him that killing a king is sinful and that as a Brahman he should have tolerated the offense. Therefore Jamadagni advised Parashuram to atone for his sin by traveling to various holy places. So I wanted to focus on the last part of this introduction. This chapter mainly is about Parasuram and most of the verses, previous verses to this story are just describing the dynasty. So something um, very I think amazing takes place in this chapter. Parashurama is described as Shakti Vishavatar. And as the story goes, Kartavi Arjuna came to the hermitage or the home of Jamadagni and um, Parashurama was not present at that time. I'm trying to remember the story, I haven't read it recently, but as I remember, Kartavarajan came and maybe he came with disciples, but in any case, he was served very nicely because the Kamadenu cow provided everything that was needed to serve so that means whatever Jamadagi needed 
to take care of Kartavarajan and the others that were with him, it all came from that one cow. И все, что было необходимо для Джамадаги, чтобы послужить Катери Аджуны, оно пришло от этой коровы. So, that's quite an amazing cow. Это очень необычная корова. So, when Kartavir Arjuna found out that he was, he was amazed that he could be served with, with such opulence and variety. And so quickly. Что ему так быстро было принесено такое большое разнообразие и такое высокое качество. So then he found out the reason was because of the cow. И он, когда он выяснил, что причина этого это чудесная корова. And then he thought, I'd like to have a cow like that. И он подумал, ну вот мне тоже такая нужна. And then he thought, I'd like to have that cow. А потом подумал, ну мне теперь вот эта как раз нужна. And then he took that cow. И он забрал эту корову. And when Parshuram came back, he saw the cow wasn't there. And I, either his father told him, or he made the assumption, somehow or other, he understood, I can't remember, but he understood that Kartavya Arjuna had taken, had stolen the cow. So he was very angry, and he went to find Kartavarajuna and he found him and he killed him and he took back the cow. And then when he came back his father chastised him. As described here it said it's a, it's a sin to kill a king, you shouldn't have done that. And he also told him, he said, we're Brahmins. И он сказал ему, мы же Брахманы. So we're forgiving. То есть мы их so, должны прощать. It's the first quality or principle quality of Brahman is we're forgiving. So you should have forgave him and not uh, retaliated. И это первое качество Брахмана, что Брахман должен прощать, и ты в этом случае должен был просто простить его. Okay, so that makes sense. Brahmins shouldn't kill people. И это вот имеет смысл, что Брахман не должен убивать людей. Especially kings. Even if the king takes something. Okay. But what's so amazing is that his father is correcting him. And he's a Shaktavishavatar. And in the purport, I believe this is you know in the story, you'll find out later, but as I remember, Prabhupada says, if you Commit a sin or do something wrong, even your Shakti Vishavatar, there is a reaction. This is like incredible. И Прабхупада там это дальше будет в истории. Я не помню точно где. Прабхупада в комментариях пишет, что если даже вы являетесь Шакти Вишаватар и вы совершаете грех, то все равно будет реакция, и это поразительно. I mean, you know, sometimes we think, well, I'm a devotee, so there won't be a reaction. Иногда мы думаем, ну я преданный, никаких реакций не будет. It's not really the right way to think. Это не совсем правильный образ мысли. It's true, Prabhupada said, there won't be a reaction if it's accidental. And you regret having done it. But if you think, I'm a devotee, I can do it, and there won't be a reaction, no, there will be a reaction. So what to speak for us, even this Jamadagi said that Uh, Prabhupada said, even for, even you're the supreme personality of God that incarnates Shakti Vaishavatar, you do the wrong thing, there'll be a reaction. So, in this story, the Prabhupada makes the point that Brahmins, the, the primary quality of a Brahman, They're tolerant, they're forgiving, and so forth. И в этой истории Прабхупада подчеркивает, что uh, одно из самых главных качеств Брахмана, что они uh, все, все прощающие, они всех прощают. And, and so one of the challenges we have is that sometimes situations are such that it seems that we have a right to retaliate. 
И часто это то как бы, испытание, которое к нам приходит, что мы оказываемся в ситуации, когда мы чувствуем, что вот сейчас я имею право как бы, возразить или ответить. And if we retaliate, we think, well, somebody hurt me, so my retaliation is normal, so there's nothing wrong with it. И поэтому мы думаем, что вот кто-то меня обидел или принес мне какие-то страдания, и мой ответ на это, это будет вполне естественным. In other words, if I hurt you, then you'll feel justified in hurting me. То есть если я принес вам какие-то страдания, то, то вы будете чувствовать себя вполне нормально, чтобы дать мне удачу. Right? Да. A lot of times we think like that. Well, you hurt me, I will hurt you because you deserve it. Now, Yudhisthira Maharaj said something about this. When he was talking to his wife, Drupadi, after they were exiled. After exile. Yeah, right after the exile. Drupadi was thinking, We were cheated, yeah, so, and we, we lost our, we bet our kingdom, but they cheated us, so why should we go in exile? The game wasn't fair. So she was telling you to steer, it's not fair, you should just go back and get the kingdom, because they cheated us. И вдруг думала, что да, мы проиграли все, но это была нечестная игра, и поэтому, так как это было нечестно, почему мы должны идти в знание, мы должны просто вернуться и забрать все назад. She was really angry. И она была очень, она очень была гневная. And she said, you're a Dharma Raj. И она сказала, ты Dharma Raj. You should know these things. Ты это должен все знать, ты должен сам. It was undharmic the way they cheated you out of your kingdom, so you don't have to give them your kingdom, just go back and reclaim your kingdom. And because she was angry, Yudhisthira lectured to her about how we should not act on our anger. И потому что она гневалась, то Ютишира Махарадж, он наста начал наставлять ее о том, почему нельзя действовать под влиянием гнева. And he went on for a few minutes, talking about all the ill effects of acting on one's anger. И он несколько минут ей рассказывал о том, какие плохие последствия приходят от того, если человек действует под влиянием гнева. And then he ended his talk. И он закончил эту беседу. By talking about forgiveness, and he made an amazing point. И он как раз закончил ее, говоря о всепрощении, и он очень замечательный момент сказал. He said the universe exists because of forgiveness. Что вся Вселенная существует только благодаря прощению. So what did you mean by that? И что он имел в виду? It's very interesting. Это очень интересно. At least if you look at this statement from the perspective of the Chakra. Особенно, если вы посмотрите на это высказывание с точки зрения шатри. Because if you're a chakra and you're offended, you, you will kill the other person. Потому что если вы шатри, вас оскорбили, то вы убьете другого человека. So he's saying, if I'm offended and I retaliate, you're offended and you retaliate, we'll just kill one another. Что если я, я вас как-то оскорбил или принес страдания, то вы, вы не отвечаете, если вы меня оскорбили, я отвечаю вам, то мы просто убьем друг друга. So if everyone retaliates for offenses, we'll destroy. Everyone will just will be destroyed eventually. So he said, therefore, the universe is maintained by forgiveness. Isn't that interesting? Yes, that's as interesting as Parsaram getting a reaction. It's not normally the way we would think. So, a huge challenge for us is that we have certain behaviors we're meant to follow, but life situations tempt us not to follow them. И это вызов для нас, что мы знаем, как, правильно, как нужно себя вести, но приходят ситуации, которые нас побуждают не, не делать так. If somebody criticizes you, например, кто-то вас критикует, you'll become upset. то вы расстраиваетесь. И очень естественно захотеть в ответ критиковать человека в ответ на то, что он критикует вас. That's being human, right? That's yes. normal. Это просто естественное человеческое поведение. 
If someone's angry at you, если кто-то на вас гневается, it's just normal that you'll be upset. Это просто естественно, что вы расстроитесь. And if you have a fiery nature, it's normal that you'll fire back. А если у вас такая очень огненная природа, то вы ответите сразу. If someone's angry at you and you're an angry person, you'll get angry back. Maybe even more than than them. Если вы очень такой горячий, то если на вас кто-то гневается, то вы еще больше можете ответить, чем он вас гневался. Here is the problem. As devotees, we're not supposed to do that. If you're not a devotee, then you may have your own values or principles, and so you kind of decide how you want to respond. But as devotees, we we don't have the luxury to decide how to respond. It's already been decided for us how to respond. And sometimes we don't like how it is decided for us. So somebody gets angry with you, criticizes you. So what are you supposed to do as a devotee? If you read the purport, as you will read later, Prabhupada saying this is the prime quality of a Brahman that they're forgiving. So sometimes what we're asked to do seems impossible. And that's the challenge that we have in being devotees. That sometimes we have to do things which are practically impossible. И это вызов для нас, как преданных, что иногда от нас требуется что-то, что кажется невозможным. And so you have, you have, um, what's the word? Two things are, two things are against one another, two opposites. I'm thinking of the word, what's the word? Antagonistic. Antagonistic, there's another word. It's like a paradox, there's two opposites. Anyway, you understand. No, On one hand, you have your natural emotional response to a situation. How you feel when somebody is angry with you or criticizes you or mistreats you. То есть кто-то как вы будете себя чувствовать, когда кто-то вас критикует, кто-то гневается на вас или как-то ограничивает вас. And on the other hand, you have the instructions of Guru and Shastra of how to behave in that situation. So, so, so they're uh, conflict, they're conflicting. Это they're going against one another. И с другой стороны, у вас есть наставление Гуру и Шастры, которые говорят, как действовать в этой ситуации, и они друг другом конфликтуют. I feel like yelling back, but the scripture says I'm a Brahman, I should forgive you. И я чувствую, что мне в ответ нужно наорать на человека, а шасты говорят, вы ты Брама, ты должен простить. So there's two conflicting things going on. И поэтому две противоречивые вещи это происходит в один момент. Krishna likes it. It pleases him. И Кришне это нравится, это ему доставляет ему удовольствие. When you act with preventable qualities. Когда мы действуем, используя гармоническое качество. And knowing that. Gives us the strength to do it. Otherwise, we don't want to do it. We don't have any reason to do it. Why should I forgive him? Look what he did to me. I'll never forgive him. If I see him alone in a dark alley, it's going to be very unfortunate for him. Yeah, these things. Well, the women may not think like that, but the men. Many men will think like that, even devotees. То есть, может быть, женщины так не думают, но мужчины даже приятно они могут так думать. The women won't think about beating him up, but they'll think the other things. Ну, женщины не подумают, кого ты избить, но они другие способы. I hope they won't think. Maybe some will. I don't. Я надеюсь, они так не думают. But that's not pleasing Krishna. Но это не удовлетворяет Кришну. So we control the feeling because we know it'll please Krishna. И мы контролируем свои чувства, зная, что это доставит Кришне удовольствие. 
with divine qualities, Krishna is pleased. If we act with the Maya qualities, he's not pleased. То есть, когда мы действуем, используя божественные качества, Кришна доволен, а когда мы используем демонические, Кришна недоволен. Neither is your guru pleased. И гуру точно так же гуру не будет доволен. Think your guru is pleased if you beat up somebody or yell and scream at somebody? Of course not. Подумайте, что будет ли ваш гуру доволен, если на кого-то орёт или побили кого-то? Конечно же нет. So, now let's go to Arjuna on the battle of Kurukshetra. The situation was not exactly the same, but the context was similar. <coughs> he wasn't angry. He was passive. So it's the opposite. But Krishna wanted him to be angry. <coughs> it was the same thing, but backwards. Be angry. No, I'm not angry. <laughs> You're a Kshatriya. You have to fight a Dharma. You should be angry. No, I'll just leave the battle. So it, it's a similar thing. He's conflicted with Krishna's instruction and his own feelings. They're different. So that's what it means to be a conditioned soul. Our emotions in, in a neophyte or beginning stage of bhakti are not necessarily in line with the instructions that Krishna gives us. So we have this contrast. I feel this way, but Krishna is saying, don't act that way, act this way. So Arjuna didn't feel like acting the way Krishna wanted him to act. So for us, as conditioned souls, feelings are very powerful, they're very strong. And feelings kind of dictate reality to us. If you're angry at someone, then that anger becomes like the absolute truth for your world. This person is bad. I don't like them. And that's your reality. Isn't it? Yeah. No, no, he's not so bad. Yes, he is. <laughs> you should forgive him. No, I shouldn't. So, so our emotional world becomes our reality and we see the whole world through emotion. Now, which is fine if you're a pure devotee. But as a conditioned soul, it doesn't always work. So as conditioned souls, there's always this battle going on. Between what I feel like doing, and when it's not what Krishna wants, then the contrast. And so, in order to be Krishna conscious, we have to be able to not be at the whims of our emotions until we're on a higher level when it's not a problem. Now, I believe there's something that's, that's very simple that we often forget or don't apply in our lives. Sometimes, because of emotions, we want to act in a certain way. And maybe God brother or God sister or a friend or a senior will tell us, I don't think Krishna will be pleased if you do that. А кто-то нам может сказать, наш духовный брат или сестра, или кто-то старший, может нам сказать, ну вот если так сделаешь, то Кришна не будет доволен. 
And that's the last thing you want to hear. А это будет самое последнее, что вы хотите вообще услышать. Because you want to do that. Потому что вы уже хотите это сделать. Have you ever had that experience? У вас есть это опыт? Don't tell me what Krishna wants. Не надо мне здесь говорить. Don't tell me what Guru Maharaj wants. Не надо мне говорить, что Guru хочет. I want to do this. Я вот я хочу это сделать. And and the simplest, most basic aspect of our philosophy is do what pleases Krishna. А самый Основной, самый важный аспект нашей философии – делать то, что доставляет Кришне удовольствие. Do я не хочу этого делать. Значит, почему я это должен делать? То есть только это одна, один причин. Это удовлетворит Кришне. И это единственная причина, которая вам нужна. То есть не нужна никакая другая, вторая причина. Или удовлетворит Гуру. И все. И не это So often we don't think like that. Не удивительно ли, что как что как часто мы об этом совсем не думаем? You agree? Вы согласны с этим? Yes. That's a, that's another amazing point. We have a few amazing things in this class. That's also amazing. Это тоже вот одно из удивительных вещей, о которых мы сегодня говорили на лекции. Why don't we stop and see if you have any... I can speak more, but if you have any questions, we can stop now. Yes, yes. Thank you for the class. Uh, yes, I would like to comment on this story. When a man in the world met a cobra, and she became his teacher, and he said, Lord, 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 Lord. И потом, через месяц, он пришел, и эта кобра была побита, такая же, такая же. И народ ну и сказал, что случилось? Она сказала, ну ты, духовный учитель, сказал мне, чтобы я не гневиться, я бы в смирении, и все бы меня погиб. А он сказал, народ ну и, а вот видишь, я сказал, чтобы не гневиться и не кушать, но чтобы капюшон пока зевать, и так гневиться, я это не сказал. How do we understand that story? Yeah. So <laughs> see, I understand that story. He was describing the story of Lord Muni and the and the cobra. You know, that cobra was a disciple in his last life. You know. Yeah. Lord Muni in his last life was given a benediction by Narayan that he could choose anyone. And grant them that they could go back to Godhead. У Нарада Муни было благословение от Нарайны, что он может любого любой живое существо вернуть взять обратно в духовный мир. And and Narayan gave him that benediction because he wanted to show Narada Muni that even if you give people the benediction to go back to Godhead, they won't take it. Nobody wants to go. А Нарайна это сделал это для того, чтобы показать Нараду Муни, что даже если дать людям такое благословение, на самом деле никто не хочет. So he gave this devotee the benediction, but the devotee said, "We'll come back later. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready." And then he died, and he became the snake in his next life. So he's asking, "How do we apply this instruction that Narada gave to the snake?" He said, "Pretend like you're going to bite, but don't bite, because he was being harassed." И в эту историю, что пример для нас, что эта змея жалуется на Радуну, то есть что мне делать, меня бью, и на Радуну не говорит, ты не, не кусай, ты просто притворяйся, что гневаешься. Я хочу сказать, что мы не змеи. Представляете, преданный, как я его делаю. <laughs> and we're not being harassed so much. But, you know, the, the instruction, the general instruction, the devotees <coughs> give is if, if people harass you, don't you don't retaliate, you tolerate. And if people harass another devotee, then you retaliate. So you don't retaliate for yourself, you do it for another. То есть мы не защищаем самих себя, но если они плохо обращаются с другими преданными, то тогда мы можем быть. But we can say in this story of the snake, it was an impediment to his bhakti, and so he needed a practical solution. 
И в истории со змеей мы видим, что э, вот это как бы ненасилие было привязано к типу акции, и это поэтому было такое практическое решение. In of the of his body. И это было связано с э, типом его тела. So that worked for him. И вот для него это сработало. So then people stopped disturbing him so he could do his bhajan. Чтобы люди больше не...